Hey everybody, it's Matt Wrestling with Whiskey back again. I hope you've kind of started your life somehow, but if not, you're still home, still quarantined, still maybe not at work. We've got plenty of awesome reviews, tasting notes, blah, 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 blah. Whiskey, whiskey, whiskey is the point, and we are continuing that today with a company that's been on a roll lately with a lot of their releases, and that is the Bardstown Bourbon Company. And we are today we are looking at their latest collaboration, which is the Chateau, oh, this is going to be good, the Chateau du Labad. Labad? Labad? That's how an ignorant American would say it. I took French for three years. You think I'd be better at it, but I'm not, and I'm going to stop because I don't want to <laughs> insult the fine, fine Armagnac company that we're going to be talking about. But um, it is an Armagnac collaboration. Um, the Chateau du Labad, I'm going to say. Um, they take 12-year Indiana bourbon <clears throat> MGP, and they age it for 18 months in one of these Armagnac barrels. And it comes out at cast strength, which in this case is 118.4 proof, leading us to a 59.2% ABV. Um, that's something I love about these Bardstown collaborations is the time and care at which they do it. So a lot of companies that have quote unquote finishes will throw it in for four months, six months. And I have found to almost to a T that anything that will go over 12 months or something that will commit to that much time will have a much more substantial and to me, impressive finish and effect on the whiskey. In fact, there's very few that I've seen that go any longer than Bardstown Bourbon's 18 months for all of their finishes. Um, I, I believe 1792's port finish did two years, which is pretty incredible. And that's actually a really solid finished bourbon. And then uh, I do know Bull Run was doing some corn whiskeys from MGP finished for over two years, something like 26, 28 months um, in Pinot barrels from Oregon. So, and that was a really, really special and unique release um, for us. And that wasn't even a, a bourbon. That was a super high corn, younger corn whiskey that was uh, aged in used barrels and then finished for over two years in Pinot barrels. So yeah, that was a unique super, but the, I believe the long finish is my point, is what helped it out become such a unique, unique product. But these thing, all of the collaborations Bardstown has done, the wine, the brandy, all of it has been 18 month finishes, which I think impart an incredible amount onto the whiskey. But enough talking about it, let us taste it. Cheers to all of you. And you know what? While I'm up here, look at that. Look at that color. Now, I mean, it's a 12-year bourbon, so you already know it's going to have great color. But that 18 months in an Armagnac barrel, which if you've ever had an Armagnac, it's a type of brandy. It's a type of cognac. Those have incredible color sometimes on them. Um, I don't know. You know, it's a great question. I should reach out and ask how old the... Armagnac barrels were. How, how long did they age Armagnac for? That's a great question, but you can tell there was a lot of influence there. It's just there's this almost ruby redness to it, um, this extra dark copper. It's pretty awesome. Let's take a whiff. And right off the bat, there is just a ton going on from super rich spicy high rye bourbon, which we know Indiana is known for, pepper, to these deep, dark fruit notes imparted, I have to imagine, by that Armagnac finish. Complemented with these baking spices, this like cinnamon and clove that I find a lot in um, Armagnac, cognacs, cherry, and almost this brown sugar. And for almost freaking 120 proof, 
as you keep going back to it, I mean, I have to breathe in deep to get any kind of alcohol off this. It's just like flowery and fruity, anchored in that rich, rich 12-year-old bourbon. Kentucky hug, excuse me, Indiana hug, all day long. Immediately coats the entire mouth. Um, those peppery baking spices are there. There was this fruitiness there, a sweetness, again, angered in vanilla and oak. The proof hits you for sure. Take small sips. There's a lot to appreciate. Mm. This has got this bold sweetness to it. The oak, the fruit, dark fruit. Um, it feels like a, a bit of a punch in the face, but in all the best ways. I feel like this would be an incredible compliment to a cigar. Um, we've seen a lot of quote unquote cigar finished blends and stuff like that or that are finishing these wine and cognac barrels because that's people drink cognac with their cigars in it because it is this sweet fruity to complement the smokiness, that dry smoke of the cigar and everything like that, the tobacco. And so this has a lot of that going on. This drying, spicy effect, lingering dry peeled fruits on the roof of the mouth, starts in the very front but rolls slowly to a nice long finish down the back of the throat. That is very, very enjoyable. Uh, I do know this is the pre in the premium price tier. This is over one hundred dollars. You'll probably find it anywhere. Um, 119 to 130 bucks is what you'll probably typically see it on the shelf for. It is very limited. And, you know, once they do these, this, it's, it's gone, as far as I know. Um, this, they all command that price point, I think, all these collaborations. But this one in particular, I'm going to stop short of saying it's my favorite because I know I'll go back and taste something else and say that's my favorite. But... Ah, screw it. For now, this is my favorite collaboration that Bargetown Bourbon Company has done so far. It balances everything. It's got the age. It's got the sweetness, the spiciness, everything you want in bourbon and finishing rolled into one. And a great compliment to something like a cigar or just sitting on the porch. Thank you, guys. Always be collaborating on things in your own mind. Always be trying new things. Always be tasting, expanding your palate, and always, always, always be wrestling with freaking.